in educational research, especially articles that you'll probably read, you'll find that scores are represented in a lot of different ways. I think, um, however, that the, the ones in your textbook are pretty clearly outlined. I think most of you in educational research are pretty comfortable with things like stay nines and percentiles. But there are two types of standardized scores that I'd like to talk with you about and make sure that you understand. And those are Z-scores and T-scores. What we mean by standardized is that what you do is you transform the scores to a normal distribution curve and can compare them that way. Don't get too hung up in that, but they're often called standardized scores. Doesn't mean they come from a standardized kind of test. It's, it's what we've done to the scores as we've transformed them. We use many different ways to represent scores, whether they're scores on a test, a survey, or some other kind of measure. The most obvious is the raw score, which is the actual score a person earned or got. The problem with raw scores is that they don't give any information about whether they are high or low, unusual or regular, and, and let me give you an example. If, you, if I give a test and the mean is 75 and a person's raw score is 78, that doesn't give you a whole lot of information about that test and, and the way the scores were distributed. Um, here's an example of a distribution where the mean is 75 and the raw score is 78 in red. Here's another one. We can't even compare these two data sets because they may not be on the same scale and they obviously don't have the same distribution. So what we do is we use other ways of representing those scores that have a lot more information in them. Let's look first at a z-score. A z-score tells you how many standard deviations from the mean a score is. We use a normal distribution to represent the scores and put the mean at zero. Then the scores are represented as distances from the mean called standard deviations. So a score that is changed to a z-score of 1.25 is 1.25 standard deviations above the mean. A score that is changed to a z-score of negative 0.75 is three quarters of a standard deviation below the mean for that group, for the, all of those, that group of raw scores. So the Z scores let you know how far from the mean the score is in standard deviations. It's quite easy to change a raw score to a Z score, but and you do need to know the standard deviations of the scores or how the scores are spread out along that distribution. You simply subtract the mean from the raw score and divide it by the standard deviation. I do not expect you to be able to calculate these. Think about it conceptually though. You're taking the distance from a particular raw score to the mean, whatever that distance is, and then you're actually dividing it by the average distance from the mean for all the scores. On a normal distribution, um, let me, let me back up a little bit here. So say I've got a raw score of 82 with a mean of, and the mean of all the scores in that set is 70 with a standard distribution of 6.2. That means that this raw score becomes a z-score of 1.94 and that's almost two standard deviations above the mean. On a normal distribution, that is pretty impressive because you can see that few score out that high from the mean. Now let's take a raw score that's below the mean, 65. And I do the same kinds of calculations and this time notice that my z score, the z-score is negative 0.81. This raw score is almost one standard deviation below the mean. And you can see that it's not as unusual on a normal distribution. There are lots of people on that curve who score in that area. Notice that z-scores, it's a lowercase letter and it's italicized. Keep in mind, this is the part that I want you to understand. A z-score is measuring the distance from the mean that that raw score is. And it's measured in standard deviations. The mean for all of the z-scores in a data set becomes zero 
and the standard deviation for the z-scores is 1. The wonderful thing about z-scores is, is that you can compare two totally different groups of scores. Let's look at this example. A student got 83 on his math test and 87 on his writing test. Which one did he do better on? If you figure out the z-scores, you can see that you now have evidence that he did quite a bit better on his math test than on his writing test. He scored 1.26 standard deviations above the mean for his math test, but on his writing test, even though his raw score was higher, he scored only 0.78, or about three quarters of a standard deviation higher than the mean. So the raw scores didn't give us this kind of information comparing it to the mean. And as it's pointed out in your textbook, I can now easily find Bill's percentile rank for each test, and that would tell me what percent of students scored above or below him on each test. Z-scores can be negative, remember, if the student scored below the mean. But intuitively, that seems to be confusing to some people. What pops to mind is a question like, how can a student who got some points score a negative 0.125? It's very confusing for um, some people. So we can change the z-scores to t-scores, which are a little more intuitive, especially for those who aren't used to standardized scores a lot, such as parents. Let's go back to Bill's scores for his two tests. With a t-score, I'm changing the z-score to have so that the scores now have a mean of 50 and they go up, you know, they go from 0 to 100 and the standard deviations are in tens. So let's see what his math looks like. His z-score on math was 1.26. When I change it to his t-score, his score, his standardized score becomes 62.6. And for writing, I change that z-score to a t-score and it becomes 57.8. It's still really clear that he did much better on his um, math test than on his writing test. To wrap this up, I do not expect you to calculate standardized scores. I do expect you to be able to explain what they mean and to use them accurately when describing sets of data.